Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Electro Study. This is lecture series 6, Network Security, dealing with web security consideration. Thanks for the support shown. Please do like, share, subscribe and comment. Come let's go into the video. Web security consideration. Why we need security? To secure the data that is transferred from one end to the other end. So there should be some consideration when we are posing some security protocols on the websites or the servers we use. So based on that, we have come to a conclusion that it is the websites are prone to threats. It is not always secured. It is prone to threats. So how the security can be done for those threats? So security is nothing but it is a protocol that is followed over a data that is transmitted from one end to the other end. It might be in particular network or it might be through website or through an internet. And there are some basic threats that is happening uh, uh, in the webs. So basic threats include phishing, farming, ransomware, spyware, viruses and worms, code injection, denial of services. So these are some basic threats that's you, that we can come across when you are using some websites. It is, it is clear that some data will be modified. Some there will be virus attacked website. Once you go into the uh, website, your complete system gets attacked by viruses. There will be a software code that will be developed in particular website. As soon as you enter the website, the code will be injected to our system. And based on denial of services, when you try to en enter into some other uh, person's account by uh, putting so much of uh, unknown passwords, the bank servers or the other servers where you are trying to log in, will uh, they will completely deny all the services that you are requesting for. So these are some uh, considerations that we have to see. So based on that, the threats that is happening is divided in two ways. One way is active attack and passive attack. The other way is locating the threat or after locating the threat, uh, classifying the types of threat at each location. So you obviously know what is active attack. It is modifying the message that is sent to the server side from the client. Passive attack is nothing but it monitors and completely takes control. You, It is not just modifying the uh, messages, it is completely uh, taking the traffic uh, analysis of a network into control. So that is passive attack. The other way when you are seeing about the classification of locating the threat, it might be in different cases, might be the uh, threat will be in the web server or the browser or suppose in the network area through which the data is transmitted from one end to the other end. So there the target will be from the user, web application or the browser. So next seeing about the different levels that can be given to protect all these threats. So here you can see you have IP security in the TCP layer where you have different application connected to. So here you can say that the IP security protocols that you are providing completely protects the uh, layer or the completely protects the application from malfunctioning. That is, this IP security will be having the capability of filtering the traffic that is occurring in that particular network. So here it is end-to-end -end connection. So whatever it, whatever malfunctioning is happening across the network, it will be transparent to the end users. So your IP security helps in this way. So when you are considering the IP security with SSL or TLS protocols, so SSL and TLS you will be seeing in detail in the coming lecture series. So here with SSL and TLS with IP security protocol, it will completely provide a transparent data transmission across the end users. 
so it comes in a level of packages like how a software come in set of packages where all library is loaded then the software will be working properly so like that you have some specific packages like you can have netscape microsoft explorer browsers it will come with along with the ssl packages so all like most of the web servers wherever you are using this ip security when you are using ssl it completely comes with the ssl and tls protocol equipped with it and coming into the application layer you can see ip security with different uh, other uh, protocols tcp udp and different application being used so this services is said to be this application level services is said to be tailored to give any kind of services that a particular application requires and next moving into different threats consequences and countermeasures so when you ensure that integrity should be there in particular communication you have to see that there are more threats happening to spoil your integrity confidentiality denial of services authentication so in integrity you can see that there are modification of data that is done or there are there are injection of viruses worms or trojan horse in the browsers so or the memory itself will be modified so based on this threats there are some consequence that is faced by the user so when there is a modification of users there obviously there will be loss of information that is occurring so uh, your complete system will compromise something and then it will give you uh, unwanted results so what countermeasures you can take so you can you can introduce cryptographic checksum which is a algorithm that is formed which is in the form of cryptographic and confidentiality there are some threats like uh, complete data will be uh, there will be theft of data from the client side or, or and in the server side and the information through which the client and the server is talking those information will be stealed so there are some uh, something that spoils the confidentiality because of that what happens the privacy of the information gets spoiled for that you can follow encryption of data or web proxies of data so once the data is completely encrypted only the sender and the receiver will know know what kind of data it is other than that attacker or hijacker might not know what data it is in denial of services what happens is uh, the, if some request is given if suppose if that request is a false request then the machine might not understand what to do so based on that the complete disk or memory will get spoiled and the user threads will be killed so all those so because of that what consequence we are facing is uh it will be completely annoying for the user because complete messages like unwanted user is authorizing the data authorizing the data the messages messages will start coming so it will annoy us obviously so you uh, based on that what you can what you can do for the countermeasure to do this is it is actually difficult to prevent because you cannot ask any hijacker to stop attempting uh, to enter into the service so it is difficult to prevent when coming into authentication if the data is forged or if some other user completely takes one data then obviously what consequences so false information will be available which will be made valid so uh, misinterpretation will occur because of false information so for that what we can do is you can follow some cryptographic algorithms so that based on each sec checksum those techniques will be followed like where integrity confidentiality denial of services authentication will be maintained throughout the data transmission thank you stay tuned for more information